Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Newton's Nuggets. It's that show where we talk drivel for a few minutes, introduce you to somebody who's an amazing interview, and then we chat rubbish at the end of it as well. I think that's pretty much the synopsis for the every single show. Uh, no, because there's Paul and Jesse shows where we just talk rubbish. Where we just talk rubbish for about three hours, right? Yeah. Well, three hours if you didn't edit it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good. Um, um, what can we say? I mean... People have started watching our live streams. They know that we're heav- heavily edited down now. Oh, right, actually, okay. Let's do that first. Let's go through some of the things that me and you have been up to in the last week. We warned everyone last week that we were doing account. I was doing accountix and sits, and you were at accountix for your proper job. Oh my word, that hurt my head. <laughs> well, us both being there with different hats on, so to speak. Yes, I mean, you different actually reasons. Had your hat on. And I did have my hat on, and it got seen. Yeah, I did two keynote talks in two very different events, but my talks were only like two hours apart. So I had to do one, run like a maniac to the other one to get set up there as well, and do that. Now the thing that freaked me out, Jesse, and you know I have a slight issue with this. Yes. They go to these things, knowing that I'm not known at all. Okay. Yeah. I know that nobody knows who I am, and they just go, why is that weirdo got a hat on? And that's it. The first one, every chair was taken, and there were people standing all around it. Yeah. I think there was something like 200 chairs. Yeah. Okay. And then I started justifying that because I did Account X Manchester at the end of last year, and I thought maybe words got round and they've spoken to other accountants. Maybe. Maybe. So then I thought, the sits one, that'll be quieter. That's only going to be like 30, 40 people, and that'll be fine. That had about 200 seats in it. And all the seats were taken, and those people were standing around every itch. Jesse, yeah. I think I might need to admit that maybe more than seven people know who I am. <laughs> well, well... Considering this conversation started with the fact that we started streaming and you're averaging more than seven people per stream. But, well, we've been streaming for... Right, so we're recording this on Monday. I've been doing streaming gaming for three days now? Four days? Four days. Four days. And I've got something like 42 followers and and my last stream had some an average of 12 viewers throughout the whole thing. Granted, one of them was me. Yeah, one of them was you. One was my dog. <laughs> one... Your dog does not have a Twitch. Damn it. I've been full okay. again. You found me out. <laughs> um, mate, it's all a bit weird. It's possible he does have Spotify and is one of the seven that download this this podcast. Yes. Yes, he's one of the seven. He stole my old phone, which when, when I class it as my old phone, that means it was made in 1971. Yeah. Um, I'm getting seriously, Jesse. I'm getting confused with this. <laughs> um, I quite like the podcast because if I just don't look at the download numbers, I can believe it's seven people. Yeah. Now I'm out doing live stuff again. You kind of see the people. Um. What the hell have we done? <laughs> what's What's very funny to me is that. We talk about the seven followers, and I don't know if you've looked at them, but <clears throat> I, I, uh, what, looked I've at each the... of the seven. No, 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 no. I've looked at the numbers. Uh, I've seen how many downloads we've had today. So I don't want to look, do I? Not really. No. Should I just leave it alone and walk away? Yeah. Got it. Thanks, mate. Um, ladies and gents, and that's why if you ever find yourself in this weird position that I'm in, you need a mate working with you. Who will happily hide all the stuff you're scared of? <laughs> in this case, followers. <laughs> in this case, all the nice people that follow us and listen and emails. Um, and the emails I get in, I've just decided that there's only seven people, but they change their names every so often. Of course, yeah, sure. Awesome. Awesome. We got this. We got this. So yeah. Right, talking of you being at Accountex and doing public speaking, Paul. Yeah. It was I'm trying to segue into our you know. Yeah, this is well. It works quite beautifully. This one, doesn't it? Because the speaking stuff, 
is really what has helped mental theft get known. Yeah. Um, and when we were, even from that first conversation we had about the business, when I came to you with an idea and I was fully expecting you to say things along the lines of don't be an umpty, this will never work. Oh, God, I wish I'd said that. It would have been so much less work for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you turn around and went, yeah, we, this, this works. Let's do the speaking stuff to, to see if there is a market and how much help people need. Mate, can you imagine if we hadn't gone down that route? All the stuff we're doing now wouldn't have even kicked off. Yeah. Um, so that does segue into today's interview, which is an amazing lady called Jackie Goddard, and she helps people with being able to speak confidently about themselves and their businesses. Um, and we also go off on one about musicals. Yeah, you do. I'm sorry. I, I'm still loving <laughs> I, I still, I still, enjoy, oh my word, I got all flouncy then. Did you know it's like stuck in hand gestures? <laughs> I love the music. It's fine. Because uh, as a side note, I uh, was photographing a wedding at the weekend and um, one of my friends um, always, she always makes a joke about um, about how camp I get with doing different things um partly because she's in she's got a very large lgbt community around her yeah and so she when i was working with her she um she once gave me the award of campus straight person she knew something along those lines that was you me oh no no. (laughs) (laughs) so but i i get when I'm doing the photography, I find that, especially when I'm essentially telling a crowd of complete strangers what to do, I find that I go quite camp, extra camp, because really? it's it's less it's less authoritarian when I'm barking orders at them. Basically, it's friend. I go very friendly and warm and cuddly, and it just comes out very camp from me. And so what that tends to mean is, and, and, but that doesn't really, I never really think about it, but cause she was sat in the audience of this wedding. Cause she was a guest. I'm just like, every time I said something, I was going, I know she sat there clocking that and she's going to bully me about that later. <laughs> See, I haven't even met this lady, but I'm so on her side. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, she's I mean she's right and yeah. it's funny. Yeah. And on that, on that lovely note about imagining Jesse being as camp as possible, ladies and gents, here's today's interview. We'll, we'll do it we'll do an advert quick and then we'll go to today's interview with the lovely Jackie Goddard. See you in a bit. Newton's nuggets. Okay, this advert is for Nikki Booten Coaching Now, Nikki is a confidence coach. She specialises in survivors of domestic abuse. So for once, you're going to hear me go a little bit sensible for a while. This is not instead of counselling, okay? Counselling is about dealing with what's happened, whereas Nikki works with people to help them change their future. Nikki's been a great friend to this show for a long time, and she's actually one of our first guests that we had. So please go and have a look at nikkibootencoaching.co.uk. And you know what Jesse's like. The links are going to be in the description. So you can just click on one of them and go and have a look at what Nikki is up to. Thanks a lot, guys. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Now, we've just given you a little quick intro into this lovely lady. And I want to introduce you all to the amazing Jackie Goddard. Say hello, Jackie. Hello, Jackie. <laughs> I love that you just did Jesse's <laughs> gag. We've been using that gag. Oh, for sorry, Jesse. No, no, you are allowed. You are yeah. definitely allowed. Anyone joining in with any of the gags that we've had in the past <laughs> just makes me prouder and happier. I, I love that. Um, Jackie, so first of all, I'm going to ask you the annoying question that I give everybody. And then realistically, we'll just have a chat all around this and about what you do, if that's all right with you. Absolutely. Perfect. In that case, Jackie, who are you and why should people listen to me and you chat for half an hour or so? Uh, Well, the easy bit first, I'm Jackie Goddard. 
Uh, my company is Power to Speak. And I get people excited about performing. So whatever that is, whether it's their business idea, their message, um, anything they need to put themselves across to their customers, clients, audience, so whether they're a leader, a speaker, um, an entrepreneur, whether they've got to pitch, whether they've got to just entertain. You know, it's just about getting their confidence up, helping them with their their speech, their clarity, their confidence, and, you know, a little bit of content as well. And do you know what, mate? Even, even when I've seen you in online networking sessions, I've noticed that once you say what you do, the people who follow you up their game a bit. <laughs> really? And, yeah, I've really noticed that people go, oh, Oh, she's got a point of what she said, and they sit a bit straighter and they pronounce it a little bit better. Yes, a little bit clearer. It does make, yeah. So, how did you get into this? Why? Why did you start wanting to help people with speaking? Well, I think it comes from my background in acting. So, growing up, I always wanted to be an actor. You know, I used to put on plays in the school playground. I used to drag all my friends into it. I'd direct, I'd write the script, I'd star, I'd do everything. And then Friday afternoon into the classroom and, you know, it was that was my time. And then as happens, and I think, you know, we may have had this conversation before, Paul, because I know we come from a similar background. We are both theatre lovers. <laughs> that, you know, you go through secondary school and suddenly everything kind of gets squashed out of you and no, you can't do this really, you know. Um, and so the acting kind of went out of the window a little bit because my careers officer sort of went, mm, I don't think so. You know, acting's not really a job, is it? And so I ended up going to art school, which was fine. I was, you know, I loved art. Um, so by the time I got to about 30, I ended up as a fashion designer, bizarrely. And uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's a horrible business. Let me let me put. I'm so glad I moved. I ended up in theatre because I hated fashion. I ended up sort of transferring across into costume in theatre uh, because a friend was working at the Royal Shakespeare Company, and so I got in there as a dresser. And it was stood in the wings, just listening to the actors on stage, thinking I can do that. I mean, I they like, I mean they were fantastic. But I'm thinking I'm no worse than you know I could I could do that and so aged 30 nearly yeah 30 I think I went off to drama school and I did it I, I went to drama school and I loved it um you know I felt like I'd found my tribe every, you know everything about the theatre was where I was meant to be um, and so from that I did some auditions I did Edinburgh Fringe I did a lots of I loved new plays new work to, you know people were writing new stuff um, I loved the rehearsal part of it all you know I just loved it all um, and as you probably know it doesn't always pay the bills you know, to, to auditions, you don't get paid for going for auditions. No, you can go to thousands of auditions <laughs> a year and do uh, nothing. Absolutely. Yep. And so I kind of got into teaching kids mainly, sort of drama club kind of stuff, uh, just to supplement uh, the, the acting work, which was, you know, quite thin on the ground, to be honest. And through that, I kind of came back to directing because I was obviously putting kids shows on and then about I don't know eight nine years ago I ended up I'd always put off teaching adults always a bit scared of kind of teaching them acting or you know doing anything with adults but once I started working with adults it was a revelation it was it was lovely I mean kids love to play they play whether you know that's what they do but as adults we just don't play and no. to get a group of, uh, of adults in a room and just say to them, right, make it up as you go along. You know, this is, this is your theme, this is your title, off you go. You know, you could be whoever you want to be. And for that two hours, they just played. And I could, they'd come up to me at the end and say, this is therapy, you know, this has been like a therapy session. And that's where it started for me, was like, oh my gosh, I can, I can really make a difference here. You know, yeah. just by, allowing people that time um, and so once we came into lockdown all my work in any venue you know workshops I was doing in schools in arts centres all those places obviously came to a crushing halt yeah so I, I did more and more networking online networking which is obviously where I met you um, 
and just realize that actually everybody in our sphere, anybody running their own business, anybody leading a team, anybody having to sell themselves, market themselves, needs what I learned when I was trained to be an actor. And I now realize that it's, it's incredibly beneficial to everybody. The techniques, yeah. the playfulness, the improvisation, everything. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Um, actually, you've hit on like three or four points there that I'd love to chat about. But you're right, as, as adults, we, we stopped playing. And I kind of look around and I think that's a real shame. Now, you're talking to a guy who knows that he still plays a lot, okay? <laughs> and, and I know that I, I turn everything into theatre whenever I can. And I have, um, Jesse, Jesse does find it funny because I have pretend diva moments. <laughs> because I'm possibly the yeah. least diva entertainer that you will ever meet. But I, I love it. I love, you know, pretend flouncing because it's it's just me messing about. Um, but there was a couple of things that you said there that kind of hurt and kind of struck a chord. When that careers person said acting's not a real job. Ah, oh, really? Well, to be fair, she didn't actually say it's not a real job. What she, What happened was she said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to be an actor. She said, do you belong to a theatre group? And I said, mm, no. She said, are you in any school plays? And I said, well, I was in one. She said, do you go to the theatre? And I was like, well, I grew up on a council estate. There's, there was nothing near me. There was no opportunity. It wasn't in my sphere. So I said, no. So she said, no, you don't want to be an actor. She said, if you wanted to be an actor, you'd live, die and breathe the theatre. What else can you do? Oh. And I said, well, I'm not bad at art. And that was it. I was off to art school. You were off to art school and, and somehow ended up doing costume design instead. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and, then, and then, yeah, something else you said, which I absolutely loved, was standing on the side in the wings of theatres. Mm. It's a magical place, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely. Because we all know, if you're in that position anyway, if you are stood on the, in the wings of a theatre, you know you've got to be as quiet as anything because you don't want to wreck it for the audience. But you're also in a place that not many people are allowed to be. And you can see the magic unfolding, I, I believe. Absolutely. Um, and, and honestly, I had a similar thing. I was, so I, I went to drama classes. I, I was in those, those youth theatres. I, I got parts in decent plays. And for a while, I was a technician in theatres. The amount of times I'd be stood in the wings getting ready to do a scene change or being ready to make some part of the magic happen that people would not know that I was involved in. And I'd be listening to the actors going, I don't think I'm big headed, but I could do that. Mm. And, and it was, I was right. I can walk on stage and command an audience and, and get that round of applause that I thought I could when I was yeah. a kid. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I now think, I honestly think that part of my career now, I get on so well with theatre technicians who are working my shows because I was a technician. Yeah. And, and they get it. They, yeah. you know, um, actually I get moaned at by technicians because sometimes they'll be watching my show and forget they're meant to be working because they're enjoying <laughs> the show. And, and then when it comes to the bit where they're meant to do lights out, they forget. Yeah, just if you like, get the technicians oh. on your side, then you've then then that's it, job done, job done. Yeah. But I was and actually in the um in the pit theatre in the Barbican, which is like in the seven floors down. I mean, this is like this is why it's called the pit for a reason. I mean, it's like where they buried the dead during the plague. I mean, it was like we were a long way down, and so it was their studio theatre. So it was on three sides, audience on three sides, and they had these uh, voms that came out sort of on a diagonal. Wow. And actually it was just so everyone was the stage was on the floor, basically. So you were incredibly close and the backstage area was so small and so tiny. But I used to love those tech rehearsals because I just sit in the audience. Didn't matter who I was dressed. I dressed Judy Dench was one of the actors. I, I was was one of my ladies um, and to sit and watch Judy Dench being directed by Peter Hall. Wow. Uh, Michael Attenborough was directed, you know, I mean, just some to sit in an auditorium with Peter Schaffer. 
just, I mean, it was just <sighs> an incredible experience, you know, just to sit and watch these people and think that's that's where the magic happens. It's that collaboration. Yeah. And that's what I love to bring to what I do now is, is the collaborative atmosphere that I felt and I was part of at the, the Royal Shakespeare Company because everybody is, you know, everybody's part of, of that, making that magic happen. Yeah, everybody there is a, is, a, is a point in their careers where they want this to be the most amazing thing for that audience to see. Yeah. And, and, and oh, mate, some of the names you just said there, that's got to be amazing. Yeah, it was, was. You no, know, and, and, and you're right, those production moments when you know there's a desk in the middle of the auditorium that's only for three people, and you can sit there and there's only maybe six people sat in that audience yeah. watching this thing unfold and become amazing and become the show that's going to go out to the public. Special moments, really special moments. Yeah, absolutely. So you went from love of theatre, and I know what you said. I know COVID had a, had a massive effect on my business and what I was doing and how I was delivering it. Um, and something you said in, in the start, was everyone needs to, to uh, I'm going to word it badly, I'm not going to get exactly what you said, but everybody needs you. Everybody needs to realise that they can promote themselves. Yeah. They can speak up. They can use their voice. Yeah. And I, actually, do you know what? I don't care if what they're doing, okay? I know that I'm a speaker and I get paid to go and speak at places, but you don't need to be after that as a career. You, you could be a team leader. You could be part yeah. of a team that needs to do a 60 seconds thing once in a blue moon. But this will help you. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's even just being, you know, I, when I was doing, when I first started teaching Finding Your Voice workshops to adults, I had, I had one lady that was just, she couldn't get her voice heard at the dinner table. Uh, not necessarily with her family, but you know, going out socially, she she yeah. didn't know how to how to just be able to speak up, in, how to interrupt, how to you know hold a conversation, engage people with a conversation. So it could be anything, anything from from that right the way through to you know, I've worked with C-suite guys that have got some really quite major presentations to make, and they still feel like imposters. They still feel as if they they shouldn't be there. And how are they going to? How are they possibly going to make an impression or sound professional or whatever? And sometimes yeah. it's just it's just having someone like me. To, to say it's okay you can that of course you can you you know you're more than worth being here and, and speaking speaking up and people want to hear what you, what it is that you have to say if it's if you believe it's worth saying then it's worth it's worth listening to yeah, it's so right and your example there of somebody just being able to speak up at the dinner table it's a great point mm. because you know I've been in entertainment and and comedy for years. So I know when there's the right pause or I know, you know, the moment of shouting shut up in a funny way just because I want to take control for a few seconds. But I've, I, <sighs> C-suite, that's a great example. You can have somebody in a group who's got the most amazing ideas, but they never put them forward. That's right. And if you're teaching people just to have that little bit of courage or that that little bit of I can do this to speak up and say, I think this. Yeah. It, it could change the whole direction of a business. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So something you touched on just then was your, I think you said your first workshops, find your voice. Yeah. I like the title of that. Okay. Because I think a lot of people don't even realize they haven't found their voice yet. So how do, let's say that I'm, I'm nervous about coming to work with you. What do I do? How do I get in touch? How do I find you in the first place? Well, obviously you can find me in all the, all the right places, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, you know, wherever, wherever you want to, uh, to, to look for me, I'm there under Jackie Goddard, Power to Speak. And I think before we even started recording, you said to me that you've got some stuff on YouTube as well. 
Oh yeah, well, like, yes, I have my own podcast. So yes, yeah, I you do. do. <laughs> so Power to Speak the podcast uh, YouTube channel is uh, all my all my podcasts there, and actually, you know, that's that's been a great way for me to show up for my audience. You know, it doesn't always have to be that you have to make a video or you have to um, just you know put a camera in front of your face and 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 speak knowledge. You know, it doesn't happen like that. It doesn't have to happen like that. Find a way that you want and you. Feel Feel comfortable. I've just worked with a, with a, an engineer. So a, a software engineer works for a marine company, I think. I mean, I, oh, it's all over my head. Who knows? I don't know what he did. But he was very good at what he did. But he was a young guy in his 20s. But his company had kind of pushed him forward to be the face of their YouTube channel. And he was like, oh, I don't, I don't know what to do. And he, he sort of stood there and he, he delivered all of his um, immense knowledge but he didn't feel comfortable and so yeah. you know it's finding how then can you feel comfortable so I do think that people are sometimes worried about coming to someone like me because I will obviously have to make them stand up and speak and people don't like that people are more worried about dying than they are I think it was Seinfeld that said people are more worried about giving the eulogy at a funeral rather than being in the, you know, they'd rather be in the box than actually yeah. standing on the pulpit. Yeah. Um, so it's just finding a way of it being excited. This is, this is the whole thing. It's, I know as an actor that I, once I was rehearsed, once I knew who I was, what, who my character was, what the motivation was, why was I doing it? What was the message? What was the journey? What were the audience there for? What did the audience want? Once I'd answered all those questions and I was prepared in my, with my content, I was excited about sharing it. it was, I'd, I'd done all the work. I knew everything that I wanted to. And then it was just to step on that stage. And I don't want people to be frightened for sharing their message. I want them to be excited. I mean, you can be anxious. Obviously, you're going to be nervous. You're not going to get rid of that. But those ner nerves show that you care. Yeah, that's the reason you feel those butterflies. And actually, those butterflies is the same. It's the same feeling as being excited. Yeah. So it's just about changing your mindset, getting yourself to a place where you go, no, this is people need to hear this. They need to hear from me. I need to, you know, stand up and be heard. And, you know, I have something to say that's worth saying and get to that point where they are excited about about doing it. It's, it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> I, 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 had, I had a weird moment. I had a weird transition um, when I went from being an actor who had a script and was told what to say and how to say it and a director who, who gave you details on what to do, where to move, why you're doing it that way. Um, even, you know, the lighting designer that said, at, at that word, you need to hit this spot because that's when the spotlight's going to hit there. So you, and when I was an actor... I kind of enjoyed the, f the fact that a lot of those choices were not mine. Yeah. I just had to do as I was asked and put the emotion in. Then when I chose to go out as a magician on stage and I went, I've got no script. It, it's me. Yeah. That for me was a weird moment. And I remember feeling, I remember feeling fear then. Now, you're right. I, I agree with you. Those butterflies in the tummy thing, that's the same as excitement. But at the time, I would have told you it was fear. Yeah. And, and the way my body behaved on that day, that was fear. Okay. <laughs> and, but I remember sitting there and one of my friends said to me, but you've been on stage thousands of times. You can't be scared. And it's like, mate, you've got no idea. This is different. But then I walked out there. And I remember getting a round of applause just for walking out. Ooh. And I thought, oh, these people actually want to see Paul Newton. And it gave, me, it, it gave me that weird thrill and buzz that you can't explain to people unless they've done it. Yeah. Um, and I was like, this is it. This is what I've been after. And now I don't have to learn scripts. And, <laughs> and, and that moment I'm was sure so... you have a practice, don't you? Um, yes. <laughs> um, I tell you, the first time Jesse ever filmed or videoed, uh, photographed one of my shows before the show, he said, Right, so what are you going to do? I don't know. No, no, but I need to get some idea of what you're going to do. I'm really sorry, mate, but I don't know. I literally walk on with a few bullet points and I go for it. 
Um, and yeah, Jesse just gave me this look of, you're not joking, are you? No. No. no but, I mean, and that's, that's absolutely fine. And, I, and, and, you know, I say that to people. But generally, people that can go on and do that have so much knowledge in their head. They've, they've rehearsed it, you know, a, a thousand times, you know, without even knowing that that's what they're doing. So I, yes. can, I can walk out on a stage, you know, every time I go into a classroom, every time I go into a workshop with a group of people I don't know, there's an anxiety, I don't know if it's an anxiety, an apprehension before I walk into that space. I've planned the lesson. If you could see me now, I am surrounded by, by bits of paper, all with stuff that I've spent the last 25 years saying, but it's, you know, it's my security blanket. I know it's there. But if you yeah. take things away, I wouldn't stop talking. I don't know if you'd noticed. I quite like to talk. But, you know, the knowledge is all, the knowledge is all there. And so if you've just got those bullet points, you know, I'd go in with a, with a lesson plan. But it wasn't a script. Yeah. It was just bullet points. And then for two hours, I'd have to wing it. But I knew where it was going. I knew what the, I knew what the journey was. I knew what I, where I wanted to be at the end. I knew who the audience were. I knew what they were expecting. So, you know, you can wing it. When you are when you've got to that stage and do you know what my little bullet points are pretty much my comfy blanket there's there's my book for today for those yeah. of you watching on youtube and in my book i've got my eight bullet points that i can use while i'm chatting with you um so far we've used one and <laughs> that's pretty much how it goes um and again people find it funny that i'll have eight to ten bullet points and in most shows, I only use two or three of them. Yeah, I'm the same in my classes. I was always the same in my workshops. You know, I'd have a list of things that, and I think maybe I took, I learned that from teaching kids. Is because if you give it, if you give it an eight year old two seconds where you haven't got them pinned down and doing something, they will run rings around you. So I had to make sure that I had like more than enough stuff to do so that yeah. there was never a hiatus. And There's always that, something next. Yes. Now, now, what I will say to anyone listening to this is it's okay to be different to us, okay? I've, I've finally found someone that works very similar to me. <laughs> this doesn't happen very often for me. Um, I've got friends who are also amazing magicians and amazing MCs and amazing speakers, and they have to script everything and they have to fully rehearse it and they get so annoyed if they miss, like, one word out of their own script. Whereas I just, I can't work like that. That, that would just do my head in completely. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to meet another bullet point type of person. <laughs> I'm so happy. Um, okay, so I, I decide that I want to work with you. Okay, I, I decide, I've seen you at networking or I've listened to you on this podcast and I think, actually, yeah, she can help me with this. Um, what workshops are you doing now? Well, I do, um, I've got a sort of, a, I suppose, I've got seven different programs and they're all for different things. So I've got a... Um, they're, they're mainly sort of one-to-one -one coaching programs. So it starts with like a power hour. So it might be that you've got um, a speech or a talk or a presentation coming up next week and you've suddenly gone, oh my God, I've got no time to prepare. I've got the, I've got the bones of a talk. I've got the bones of a presentation. You can, you can bring it all to me and, and we can work together just for that hour to kind of get you over that hump to kind of go right, right and set you off on your way. Um, if you want to go sort of deeper, um, there's everything from like the uh, investor presentation. So where we, we, you know, we work over a series of like, four to six weeks, uh, it, you know, an hour or so a week where we get face to face, but I'll send you off with stuff that around your presentation, slides, content. I work with your script. Um, I'll help you actually uh, with your uh, clarity projection. There's lots within um, just your, the elements of your voice, how you engage people, with, how you inspire with a certain voice, how you're authoritative with another voice, all of those kind of things. And yeah. a little bit of that comes into all of them. So whether it's the investor presentation, get your story straight. So whether you want to, my big thing is that um, your story is your unique selling point. So your journey and your experiences, if you're a graphic designer, there are you know hundreds of thousands of graphic designers you know, in, in probably 10 mile radius but there's only one of you yeah so it's finding that story that's going to that you can then put across to your audience to your ideal clients that they will relate to they will begin to trust you you can build a rapport with them by using your story so that's another one that I do where I actually just really kind of work on the on the content um, there's the new new to youtubers 
So anybody, I should, I should get something like a, a rhyming thing for TikTok, but anything, you know, if yeah. people have got to start selling themselves, apparently now the, the, what are the demographic for TikTok is now, I don't know, something ridiculous like 25 to 65. You know, whereas, TikTok has just kind of taken over yeah, our world, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, anything like that, uh, pitch it, pitch it to win it. So if you've got a pitch that you need to be doing to investors, if you're a small business owner or an entrepreneur, and if you're a speaker, if you've got a message that you want to get out there, if you're doing a TED Talk, if you've got like a, a presentation that you need to do on a larger stage, then I will, my whole thing is to bring, I get people to that kind of, performance where they actually are excited about stepping out on the stage whatever that is or, or stepping in front of a camera and that's amazing isn't it getting someone from the point of uh where they're fearing it so much like you said they'd prefer to be in the casket than doing this talk okay yeah. to actually i'm going to enjoy this i'm going to have fun with this and not only that i think they're going to love it too yeah. that's that's a different world right? yes from fearful to fearless Love that. Right. So you're not going to make me suddenly. So I'm, I know that I'm a bit scared of doing this speaking thing. I know I'm nervous about it. And you're not going to suddenly make me have to talk in front of a bunch of strangers on day one. No, gosh, no, no. I mean, and it, it might not even be that that's what comes out at the end of it. It really is. You know, you can't force anybody to do something they don't want to do. You really can't. I've learned that over many years, tried to, you know, pull a, a six year old, like you know with a lead onto a stage you're not going to do it they have to they you have to you have to make them feel that comfortable that they they come they come willingly well i've got to tell you um people who listen to my sh this show far too much okay know that jesse sends me notes that are trying to be helpful to me and i'm now going to out him because he's just sent me a note that i'm going to tell you about no. and he's just said i'll have the casket please mm. yes poor guy jackie i, I mean see. That's that, yeah, it's it, you can't get some people out there, you really can't. Well, but the I, thing is, Jackie, when when Jesse first started helping me with Newton's Nuggets, he wasn't on camera at all, he wasn't part of the, the speaking part of it at all. He'd say he didn't be on the camera. And one day he tried to ask me a question while we were recording, and he did it in that, um, how can I describe it? You know, when somebody wants to talk to you, but they want to be quiet, and they do that. <laughs> They, they try and get your attention and try and mouth it really blatantly so you can lip read. And I'm like, I've got no chance, mate. Just say what you're saying. And he said it. And I went, good question. And I carried on. Um, and because of that, we actually had some feedback saying, it was nice when Jesse joined in. I was like, right, point the camera at you. Yeah. And, and Jesse went, no, oh, I don't know. I was like, it's all right. Just, just fade yourself in if you want to ask a question and then fade yourself back out again. Absolutely. So this poor guy who's used to being behind the cameras all the time has now somehow ended up being the second man on Newton's Nuggets. Which oh, I was is... going to say the star of the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And do you know what? One time he even got forced to do a whole episode on his own because I was really ill. And he did how, it. And he how nailed was that, it. Jesse? How was that? <laughs> he's, honestly, if he comes on now, he'll swear at me. Okay, because he's, he's still not happy about it and I still prod fun at it because people still give me feedback about how well he did yeah so, but so. you can't you can't push anybody into it they have to they have to want to do it this is why I, I do like working with people that have there's a bit of jeopardy involved you know it's it's a, they've got to they're frightened of stepping off the cliff but they know they're going to have to um, and my my job is to make sure they fly and they don't fall so, you know, it's that kind of, you know, they've really, they've really got something that they need to put out there. Um, and that's, that's where, that, those are the people that I really like to help. Do you know what? I had a lady who was a best man at a wedding a while back who I was doing magic at the wedding and she just came up to me and she went, you're good with this speaking stuff. What on earth do I do? I'm, I'm doing the best man talk. And, and she, she even said to me, I'm a woman. I thought I was safe from ever having to do this. <laughs> and, and I kind of giggled and had a laugh with her. And I did a little bit of hypnosis and NLP and got her to realise that, actually, this isn't a case of everyone's trying to trip you up. No. This is a case of everyone in the room loves you and loves the relationship you've got with the groom. Yeah. And you're also best friends with his wife. How awesome is that? Yeah. And within, like, a minute, she, was, she turned the way she was looking at it and just went, this is an absolute privilege and I'm going to have fun. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, you know, what I say to you, any, any group of actors I'm about to send on stage, it's, you know, what's the most important thing and they will go to have fun. And that, that's it. Because if you, if you go on stage and, you know, this is a, as a business person, leader, his speaker, whoever you are, that could be literally on a Zoom call and you are not enjoying it you're all, or you don't believe what you're saying, then your audience are not going to believe it at all. And, and that I learned from that I learned from working in the pit. I was dressing an actor called Toby Stevens, who is Maggie Smith's son. And he, he came off and he'd been, and I have told this story before on podcasts. If anybody's listened to me before, they'd be sick of this one, but it's a good one. Uh, he came off stage having been under a sheet with an actress, uh, simulating having having lots of fun together, the two of them under this sheet. And as I say, the pit was a tiny little place, I mean, a tiny stage. So the audience are literally on three sides on top of you almost. And so I'd been through all the technical rehearsals with him, obviously dressing him for quick changes on and off. And he came off for this quick change. And I was like, how do you do that? How can you do that without laughing, without getting so embarrassed that, you know, you're having to make all these noises and do that? I, mean, I was just mortified for him in front of the technicians, in front of, you know, everybody. And he said to me, well, if you don't believe what you're doing, then the audience won't believe it. And it was just suddenly just like a light bulb went off. And I thought, that's the reason I'd not been able to have the confidence to be an actor before is because I didn't realise that. I'm not stepping on the stage as me. I'm stepping on the stage as a character, but I have to believe I am that character. I have to believe what I am doing is the truth and, you know, the absolute truth of, of the character that I'm portraying. And that's the same for all of us. Wherever you go, whatever you speak, you know, whenever you speak, if you don't believe in your heart what you're saying is the truth, then your audience will just go, eh, don't believe it either. If you're not enjoying yourself, if you go into a network working space and are, are sort of nervous, looking down at your phone, whatever, you're not going to engage anybody because because they won't they won't believe you. If you're not enjoying the process, they won't enjoy it either. No. And you know what? As a, as a magician, I've had moments when things haven't gone the way I wanted them to. And I've literally turned to the audience and gone, well, this hasn't gone the way I planned. And I'm, I'm switching the trick around in my head and, and trying to create a something else to finish. And, and I've had audiences that have never met me before going, you've got this, Paul. It's all right. We can, we can. And that's the difference. I'm not one of those yeah. arrogant magicians who expects it. I get an audience on my side and then we go on a journey together. Yeah. Um, and you know what? You're right about the acting thing. That was what I loved about being an actor was I'm somebody else for a little while. Mm. They're not actually here for Paul Newton. They're here for uh, Bob, the musical singer of whatever the fiddler on the roof time was about. It's, it, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. yeah. You turn into someone else yeah. for that hour and that's a half. Fun. That's great fun. Yeah, I love it. I do. I, I miss it. Do you, so do you think you're going to go back to theatre life at all? Um, I don't know if I'll ever be an actor again. I mean, I did love acting. I really did. And, and apparently I was quite good at it. I, you know, I had reviews. I was very good, apparently. Instinctive, I think. Um, but I think what I love is, is that kind of overview of, yeah. of telling the story. I mean, I found it quite difficult being an actor. I mean, I was always, I always did what the director told me. It was their, their show, it was their gig, that was, that was fine. But for me, it kind of took some of the creativity away from being an actor because I couldn't, I couldn't always use the instinct. I couldn't always do it, the, you know, I couldn't always find the motivation of why should I walk across that side of the stage and sit there when actually I yeah. feel like my character would break down here. You know, it, it's it's very difficult to do that thing, but you have to be over there because the scenery needs to come on here and you can't be standing, you know. So it's it's that it, that's quite difficult sometimes. Yeah, that's the difference, isn't it, between there being a very good technical reason for you to have to do something to a very good storyline and character reason. Yeah. yeah. And, and sometimes we have to fake that bit to, yeah. to make the magic of theatre possible behind yeah. us. Yes, and yeah, I remember one actor really upstaging me quite badly. He used to, he had to twist my, he had to take my arm and twist me, and and sort of 
pull me down. So I was sort of down on my knees. And every single night, because then I had this huge speech, this huge monologue to do, and he'd do it so I had my back to the audience. But you, I couldn't, you can't then go, <clears throat> and then turn onto the audience you know, and perform. <laughs> You've got you've got to stay there because that's where he's put you, and that's it. That's it. That was quite difficult to. I was thinking, oh, I don't know if I can, if I can do this full time. So, so I'm. Yeah. I think I'm more of a more of a director than I am an actor. So that would that would be nice. I quite fancy making a film one day. And do you know what? You've just reminded me of something that uh, a co- a business coach that I love to bits, Mr. Ian Dixon. He's a past guest on the show as well. Um, he said to me years ago. If you ever want to be an expert in something, you've got to get on stage. Um, and Ian's actually an introvert, but he's really, really amazing at hiding it and pushing the extrovert to get on stage himself. And I remember when he said that to me, I even looked at other magicians and loads of magicians don't like being on stage. They prefer staying and doing close up. And I thought, I think he's right. If I can do stage stuff for half, 20 minutes, half hour, I can prove I'm the expert in that. And then actually it makes the close-up even easier because people already know who I am. And, yeah, I purposely pushed the stage side of things and it has paid off. Yeah. Um, so, so, ladies and gents, if you're listening, not only am I pointing out to you what Mr Ian Dixon said to me that helped me loads, I'm also saying we've now got a lady here who can help you get on stage. Um, mate, I love what you're doing. I really do. We've already taken too much of your time. So I'm going to ask you that last question that I, that I ask everyone. And most people know why this is, but I started Newton's Nuggets just as little video clips of me for two to five minutes giving a nugget of information to help people. And every time I have an amazing guest on here, I ask them what's their nugget of information that they want everyone to walk away with. So Jackie, what's your nugget for this show? Well, I was hoping to have a word with you about this before we came on, um, because mine is actually a mnemonic that I that I use for uh, for confidence and creativity. And so it's there's five. I like it already. And it's it's trip. So T-R-I-P-P, if that's all right. So take a trip. And so the T is truth. So uh, a bit like I've just said, uh, you have to speak the truth of who you are, because if you don't believe what you're saying, then the audience are not going to believe what you're saying. The R is stay resilient. So we often look outward for uh, for our kind of uh, external, we look externally for the answers to our problems. So we look at social media, we look at the news, all of those things. And it just exacerbates what's going on inside us. So look inward for your own resilience. Look to yourself and really, you know, build that self-awareness to really strengthen your resilience. I improvise, always improvise. And we do it all the time anyway. So every time we open our mouths, we speak, never knowing what response we're going to get. So, you know, it happens. It's what we do. We improvise. And don't be frightened to improvise. It's where the magic happens. You know, it really, yeah. it really is uh, it, where created, creativity comes from as well. So uh, that's the IP, the first P, play. We spoke earlier about play. Yeah. Whatever that might be for you, give yourself headspace. You know, just have fun, have a laugh, give yourself permission to step off the treadmill. And that's where inspiration and creativity strike is when you are not thinking about it, you're just playing for the sake of playing. And the last P is be positive. So yes, and rather than no, but, and just see what happens. Yes, and is a big, great improv game. You, aren't, you, you end, somebody will ask you a question and you answer it and then say yes, and, and then somebody else can, and it, it kind of builds the excitement, it builds playfulness, it builds positivity. Whereas if you say no, but, you know, it, automatically you're on that downward kind of, uh, so yeah. Keep, keep the yes and. I love that, mate. I love that. And and your thoughts of an improvise as well. You're right. Me and you came on to it. I, I told you roughly how I work these shows that I just used bullet points to get me through. And you just said, that's all right. We're just going to make it up as we go anyway. And as yeah. long as we talk truthfully to each other, does it matter? And we went for it. Absolutely. Um, 
And seriously, Jackie, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for this. I think this is going to help a lot of people. And, oh. and I know what Jesse's like. I know he's going to put links up to all of the places people can find you. Um, fingers crossed, you'll get some people contacting you and saying, you did that silly little podcast with that bloke who wears a trilby. Can we have a chat? <laughs> I would um, love that. I would love that. Awesome. Jackie, do you want to say goodbye to everyone? I would love to say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Ladies and gents, uh, me and Jesse will be back in a minute after a word from one of our sponsors, and it will be us two talking about Jackie behind her back, and she won't find out what we've said until the show goes out. Jackie, thank you so much, mate. You've been absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Newton's Nuggets. Ladies and gents, I need to tell you about NerdCon. This is being run by really good friends of this show, Mr. Brad Burton and Mr. Paul Spicer, who is basically middle-aged gamer guy UK on Twitch. Both of them have been on the show. We love both of them to bits. And this August the 17th in 2022, they are running... Ah, oh, Jesse, how would you describe it? It's a ne- nerdy, geeky event, isn't it? It's an absolute nerd fest uh, where, where Paulie and I are going to fit right in. It's, oh, we're going to be there. We're going to be playing arcade games. I'm going to be messing about. I'm going to be playing bimbo. I'm going to be playing... With... How many arcade games are there? Oh, hundreds. Of, there's three floors, basically. And then there's... So there's three floors of games. So once you've paid your ticket to get in, basically you've got free access to all of the games. And then they've got live shows. They've got competitions. There's cash prizes on stuff I've just heard. So there's all sorts I'm of gonna stuff going I'm going to steal a load of stuff. I'm going to nick as much as I can. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that publicly. No, you shouldn't. Ah, well. Damn it. Everybody knows what you do for a living, right? Yeah, I know. Nobody, they'll trust me, right? I just won't wear the hat. Nobody oh, there, there will be stalls. So you won't be stealing from them. You'll be paying for stuff from the stalls. And there's a burger bar. There's a, for lunch, there's a burger bar and they do hot dogs and yeah. burgers and stuff. And st- I'm so and, and they Like alcohol bars for those who are... I'm gonna, yeah, oh, yeah, alcohol. We, we hardly have a drink. Might have a beer. Um, ladies and gents, go have a look at www.nerdcon.co.uk Buy your tickets there. Newton's Nuggets There we go, guys. Welcome back. Thank you so much. And didn't we warn you, right? I'm sorry about the music. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Jesse, even after the interview, Jesse was just like, you love your musicals, don't you? Yes, I do. I do. And Seriously, being in musicals when I was a kid is a... I do, I do, I do. I do, I do, I do. <laughs> I can turn into a... No, shush. Um, I did, but, yeah, being in musicals as a kid is a massive part of what gave me confidence to be a magician and why I stand on stage these days and why I have that nothing can really go wrong for me while I'm on stage belief. Um, I think Jackie's right. People really do need to gain that confidence to talk with authority about what they're doing. Jesse, what did you think of this one? Yeah, it's really, that's it's a really strong thing, and uh, I know what I've got in mind about um, some. Uh, we've got an upcoming interview with an old, old friend of the show. Old up. friend of the show, yeah, we have. And um, I'm, I've got that in mind when I say this that. But it's important to be able to be that front person, and it that doesn't necessarily mean you have to be up doing public speaking gigs, etc. Yeah. But there's a big I, difference there, isn't there? There's a big difference between trying to be a motivational and emotional. Uh, let's bear everything. Yeah. Or being a I want to talk about my business with authority. Yeah. Show you what I'm an expert in and why I'm an expert. Yeah, and and especially because we have so many small businesses listening to this. Yeah, the likelihood is that you're doing things like sales and marketing, even if you don't like it. And part of sales and marketing is just being able to stand in front of people. And that, when I say stand, that might be, be literally, that might be figuratively. Um. And just being able to talk and have a conversation, a bit like all of our guests do when they come in here um, to on Nuggets, is just being able to have the confidence to come in and go, right, okay, well, I know about this subject and I'm going to talk to you about it. And yep. it doesn't it doesn't have to be a sales pitch. In fact, it's better if it's not. It's just showing that you 
know what you're talking about. And anybody who's listened to Sam um, Pierce talking about writing a book, yeah, it's the whole point of it is you know you're not selling a, a book isn't a sales pitch. It's just a fountain of knowledge. And it's funny, using. isn't it? Because it's very different. Um, coming in here and having an interview with me is very different to being on stage and talking it to a crowd. Yeah. Um, because one of the things I've loved about interviewees is they've always said, you make it feel so easy. Yeah. That's because I just want to have a chat with you about what you do and how you yes. do it and how you can help me. And they, they very quickly kind of forget that there's going to be anyone else listening to it. Yes. Um, every but I would say that about seven yeah. listeners or while dropping a, <laughs> sorry, that's not a joke. They're better. Yes, it is. Listeners. Yes. Um, <laughs> For those of you considering sponsoring and listening to it, it is always a joke. <laughs> I love that you've started saying that. I love that you, <laughs> Paul, somebody might take that seriously and they're paying for advertising. Um, yeah, all right. There's more than seven. It's eight. There's eight. <laughs> Blimey, eight. You, that is a personal achievement for you. I know, mate. I know. Yeah. One day I might say double figures. Until that day. <laughs> um but yeah and then you know some of the some of the things that jackie was on about about getting, getting excited to perform for, for people now i think that's a that's a step further than what we're talking about now I, yeah. I i i think getting excited about what you're passionate about is a big thing yeah I, but that's the difference though isn't it is yeah. that coming across as being passionate is performing essentially exactly it's all it all depends on how you look at it, doesn't it? Yeah. Because, and, and again, right, we'll go back to the making a joke about seven or eight listeners, okay? <clears throat> yeah, I'll make a joke about that. But then on the flip side, when we started this show today, we were also joking about, I've just done two keynotes in one day that had packed audiences. Yeah. To the point that the organisers went, we needed to get you a bigger theatre. And and you look at that, and I'm just like, yeah, it's all right. It's just me being me. I'm just having a laugh with the people that are there. Yeah. I don't have an issue with how many people are in front of me when I do a live thing. Um, it's just it freaks me out when it's on a podcast. That's all. <laughs> well, that's it. That's it, isn't it? Because mm. it's that state of mind. Because for you, it's all those people knowing who you are freaks you out. Yeah. Because in that audience, in theory. None of them know who you are. Yeah, and they're just yeah. getting something great out of out of what you're saying. But which one was it? It was the one that was thinner but further back. Yeah, that was the context. Context. And when I was stood there, and a few people came up to me to chat to me that I know, and then there was other people that walked past and went, "You know, Paul, how's it going?" And and I was like, "I don't know you." Um. Some people walk past and went, oh, Paul, how's it going? And I'm like, oh, I know you from this, this, and this, and they were gone too quick. Yeah. But it was it was the people that I didn't even recognise who were happy to see me, knew my name, knew who I was. And I'm thinking, I'm still the bloke who just brought his own case in here and got everything set up by himself and sort of yeah. this, this, and this. Um, I don't know, mate. Hopefully they'll always be happy to come out to me. Uh, yeah, I mean, th the other thing I would say about the, the passion side of thing is just because you're passionate doesn't mean you have to be a Brad Burton and coming on and making uh, yeah. the stage explode. Because, for example, um, you and I both know how much I love to talking to um, Simon Clements about... Um, files. Files and branding and design and stuff like that. And he's infinitely better at design type stuff than me yeah all right wake up wake up thank you i'm back i'm back <laughs> um but he but we 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 both have a love for it but i i also really enjoy his calm style and but you, he's still clearly passionate about it and he knows what he's talking about so don't think that you can't do it just because you're not going to be you know a brad burton of this world coming onto stage and you know, do you feel you like know you're what? windswept from we've, the excitement we've, coming from? Uh, Brad's been on the show. We've talked about Brad before. Me and you have talked about Brad privately as well. Yeah. And something we've both said is so many people are used to his brash exterior and his bouncing around and get you going. 
what loads of them don't realize is that he will take time out to send to personally call someone and just yeah. go you're right How's it yeah you got this um i got a voice memo from him yesterday just saying paula saw the pictures of of accountex and i saw see what you're doing and mate you've got this this is going so well yeah i don't know if you if you look at other people within the motivational speaker type world how many of them would have done that yeah it's funny isn't it yeah and and uh something that that jackie said as well was that you need to change your mindset to realize that people need to hear what you've got to say yeah and i thought that was very clever because if you if you are an expert in something, if you are an expert in something that helps other people, then stop putting a mirror up. Oh God, I'm giving myself advice now. This is going to go. <laughs> yeah, go on. Too keep, much keep of a, a mirror up and looking too closely at you, and realize they just need the help from the things that you are an expert. Yeah. And whatever you're thinking, Jesse, shut up. Uh, thank you, Jackie, for uh, being yet another guest that comes on and uh, gives Paul some free counselling and a kick up the backside. Not enjoying this anymore, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> but this is exactly, I mean, it's nice that you're, uh, I say this jokingly, the punch bag for this sort of stuff, but I think that's why people like listening to the show is because they, um, they get the they get the benefit from and and you know what mate i'm sure people have seen changes in me i, I really am with some yeah but i also hope that those changes are are there through through all of, for all of our listeners you know they yeah. get enough out of it that they can make changes for themselves and realizations and you know whether whether that's as as simple as you know 20 bits of advice from rick on how to do social media better or whether it's whether it's crystals talking about families is priority. Yeah. Whether it's Jay Unwin talking about how to sort out your own diet without being an idiot about it. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, we've had some amazing guests. Yeah. Do you know what? I think that's the end of today's show. Yeah. Uh, well, it would be if we you hadn't just missed out uh, a really important part of the show. Or we'll pretend that that was... It. This is going to be like one of those feel-good American films, right? That was the end of the thoughtful bit. <laughs> okay? Yeah, but now now we're going to go into the bit where we even have a jingle for. We've got a jingle now. Play the jingle! It's time for the Nuggeteer of the Week. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We went from amazingly thoughtful to that, which... <laughs> Beautiful. Play the jingle. Play the jingle. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Tony Edwards, you are a genius, man. Genius. Um, right, who, who's... We should have planned this while we weren't recording. Who's announcing the Nuggeteer of the week? The week. Um, well, you, you suggested this first person... And I know them too well, so I think you should announce the first person. First but person. Both, there's two people, and it's much for the same reason. Yeah. Which is why that we've got two people this week. Me and Jesse have agreed on two people this week because at Accountex, there was lots of people that supported me. There was lots of people that helped. There was loads of people that just kind of pulled out the stops, and, and I didn't even realise they were going to. Okay? But I've got to say, Amy... Thank you so much, mate, for coming along, for taking the photos, for grabbing some video that you did. Seriously, you that just doing that has given me a load of material that could prove invaluable in the future. That was amazing of you. Thank you so much. And Ben, Ben Drury, who's been on the show, he is also one of our Nuggeteers of the Week, because he too, he, he met up with me to have breakfast before we went nuts on our weird day he took photos of before the talks during the talks he posted about it on linkedin as well so for me those two people when when i had a mass amount of people trying to help out and make sure everything was as smooth as possible 
you two absolutely shone. There is no way I can thank all of those people enough. And the one thing I can do, send you a couple of badges. Yeah. And also, I got to meet Ben. Yeah, you did. Nice. Because I'd only seen him via via this show as a recording. So he got to prove to me that he has legs. So that's he has nice. legs. He's a real person. He's just as nice in real person as he is on the podcast. One of my favourite bits was when, before the, the show started, me and Ben got access because we're speakers and because I'm good at walking past security. Um, so we got access and we were having a look at the theatre and he said to me, oh, I do need to find a new water bottle from somewhere. Five minutes later, I'm walking past a stand going, excuse me, nicking two water bottles. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> uh, um, Ben's episode is episode 65. And if you're interested in the culture of your business, especially if it's growing, go and have a listen to episode 65. And I watched the talk he did as well on uh, sits on, on the day. And he was talking about how to, how to create good culture, even when working remotely. Are you trying to look for Ben's book? I am trying to look for Ben's book, but I actually have been reading it. I think I've got a copy house. here, if that helps. The, the culture book, yeah. I'm trying to get it in focus, just for the people on YouTube. There you go. So if I do that, it goes out of focus. Yeah. There you go. This is really important for those podcast listeners. I know. Every single week we do something that the podcast listeners will go, you git. <laughs> That's it, right? Are we done, Jesse? Yeah, I think we're done. We are done. Ladies and gents, thank you so much for coming here again. Thank you so much for being part of this. And seriously, the comments, the shares, the messages, the emails, the everything that you guys send in means that you're even more part of the show. And the more involved you guys are, the more we can tailor this to what you want and need. Thank you so much for being involved. Thank you so much for all the shares. Ladies yeah. and gents, I'm Paul Newton. That's Jesse Lawrence. We're Newton's Nuggets. Yeah. We'll see and tune week. tune in for next week when we have previous guest Mag. Where well, is it, Mag? Next week? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, <gasps> and he gives us some secrets about NerdCon. Woohoo! I mean, no, he doesn't. <laughs> see you next week. Bye. 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 Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching. Now, if you want to subscribe, it should be up there. If you want to see more of Newton's Nuggets, they're down there. If you want to see more about mental theft stuff, that should be down there somewhere. And the business speaking stuff should be up there. Thank you very much. Speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.